old. <laughs> I was feeling really old because three things happened uh, in my life, and it was like it just made me feel really old. The first one was my buddy from New Jersey came down recently, and uh, I was hanging out with him in Disney, and we kept reminiscing about all of the fun times that we had when we were growing up. So all we kept talking about was how we used to be young, how we used to be young, we used to be young, and I was like, damn, I'm getting old. Then, while we're in downtown Disney, uh, a different time, after the conference, uh, we're like dancing. Uh, I know Kelsey was there, and we're all dancing, and everyone around us was like little kids. And I was like, trying to be a little kid, I was like, damn, I'm not a little kid anymore, I'm old. <laughs> and another time was, I was giving my FBLA speech last week, and uh, I was speaking to a group of eighth graders. <laughs> and I realized, damn, I'm really freaking old. I cannot even remember eighth grade. It was so long ago. So what I had to do is I had to have a shift in perspective to start feeling young. So I started doing a couple things to make me feel young. I went to uh, the museum, the Ringling Museum. That was awesome because I was definitely like the youngest person there. That was really good. In Sarasota, <laughs> everyone in Sarasota is really old. So I felt really young in Sarasota. So that was really good. <laughs> I went to uh, three cycling classes at 5.45 in the morning uh, this past week. So I never went cycling before, but it felt awesome because I was the youngest person in the cycling class. That was really awesome because no one else wakes up at the crack of dawn to go cycling except old people apparently so that was good and uh, the last thing uh, is I went on a date with someone who is like a lot older than me and the only thing she kept talking about was how young I was I was like oh this is great <laughs> so, so, <laughs> so, so, <laughs> those were those are three things that I did to cause uh, a perspective change <laughs> The, the second thing I wanted to share with you uh, as far as causing a perspective change was I was talking to my buddy and he uh, took a flight and before he went on his flight he grabbed some snacks and one of the snacks he grabbed one of his favorites some chocolate covered pretzels and he grabbed some chocolate covered pretzels put them in his bag grabbed a bottle of water went on the flight went on the plane he's sitting next to a little kid uh, already as you know you get on a flight you sit next to a little kid next to the little kid is his mom so flight takes off puts his little puts his headphones on about to chill out, he sees the little kid reach down into his bag and grab out his chocolate covered pretzels bef before he's about to zone out. So he sees the kid start eating his chocolate covered pretzels, opens up the bag, eating the chocolate covered pretzels. So my buddy's like, this kid is about to get slapped up, right? So what he does is my buddy, instead of like causing trouble with the little kid, he just reaches into the bag, looks at the little kid as if these are my pretzels, like smile on his face and eats one of the, one of the pretzels. The kid looks at my buddy with a big smile on his face and grabs a pretzel out of the bag and eats a pretzel with a smile on my buddy. And my buddy's like, what the hell? This kid's not getting a point. So my buddy reaches in the bag again with a smile on his face, grabs the pretzel, eats it with a smile on his face, but he's really thinking, stop eating my pretzels. You know, that was a smile. The, the kid reaches in the bag, smile on his face, eats another pretzel. <laughs> my buddy's like, the kid's not getting a point. So my buddy reaches a handful into the bag of pretzels holds the pretzels like this, and as he's eating every one of them, looking at this little kid, like, get the point, these are my pretzels. The little kid smiling on his face, just looking at my buddy, just eating the pretzels. My buddy's like, whatever. He's like fuming at this point. Puts his headphones on, he's just sitting there like this the entire flight thinking, I should tell this kid's mom, what, a, what, a, what an obnoxious little creep that is eating all my pretzels without even asking me. So, my buddy, doesn't say anything to the kid, doesn't say anything to the mom. By the end of the flight, there's three pretzels left in the bag. The little kid taps on my buddy and passes him the rest of the pretzels and said, here, mister, you can have the rest. Thanks, you freaking kid. You ate them all. You left me three. So my buddy didn't say anything. He's like, oh. Gets to his car, grabs his keys out of his car. He's fuming at this point, and next to his keys are his chocolate-covered pretzels. Oh. He's so what does that mean? What did he do the entire flight? He ate the kids' pretzels. He's eating the kids' pretzels. Can you imagine if you're a little kid? If you're a little kid and some man starts eating your pretzels. Can you imagine that? I'd stop. But not only that, but what did the little kid do? 
Yeah, he gave him that last pretzel. So my buddy went from fuming to absolutely embarrassed to an immense amount of respect for such an awesome little kid who not only shared with a smile but gave him the last couple pretzels. What a guy. The amount of time it takes to shift a light and the, the light bulb goes on, that's how fast it takes to shift your perspective. That's how long it takes for you to have a breakthrough. Just like that. See, the topic of my message today is breakthroughs in 2014. And one of the things that's important to know about a breakthrough is that a breakthrough can last forever if you allow it to. A breakthrough will last forever if you allow it to. See, what happens is, is we get into these habits. We get into these routines. See, it's important to know that what's easy to do, we can make a habit of it. But do you know why everyone doesn't see an immense amount of results and an immense amount of success? It's because it's also easy not to do. There you go for a philosophical idea. It's easy to do, that's why people can do it, but it's also easy not to do. Many of you have seen this quote from Jim Rohn, and I think it's appropriate. See, a lot of us focus on more people in our life will focus more attention to the thief in the alley, and that's why they'll hold their purse or hold their wallet or be, uh, be so concerned with someone robbing their possessions. But really, they should be focused on the thief in their mind that's controlling and limiting all of their beliefs and all of their habits and all the perspectives that are going to allow them to really seek and an insurmountable amount of possessions. We rob ourselves all the time from having that breakthrough. If I do my job well enough, we should be able to flip that switch together as a unit and be able to go into the summer of 2014 and really have breakthroughs all across the board. The reason why is because who's in control? We are. Since we're in control, it's easy to do, but it's also easy not to do. So first things first, we've got to make sure if we want to have a breakthrough, we've got to focus on what we can control. We've got to focus on what we can control. So first off, let's define easy. Well, what's easy mean? Easy means something you can do. That's all easy means. It's something that we can do. If it's easy, just do it. A breakthrough comes when we repeat these disciplines daily. These easy disciplines that we know we could do, we just repeat them daily. And as long as we repeat those daily, it becomes a habit. Do you know where failure comes from? If we know where breakthroughs come from, we're, and we know success comes from the disciplines repeated daily, failure is simply just an error in judgment repeated daily. An error in judgment repeated daily. Think about, uh, think about if you're like caught in an undertow, or, you're, or not even an undertow, you guys ever go to the beach, right? And you're just hanging out in the water, and there's like a drift, a slow drift, mm -hmm. and eventually you look back on your, where's, you're like, where's my blanket? Where's my, how the hell did it get all the way over, who dragged my blanket all the way over there? It's not that your blanket moved, it's that you were in this drift, but you didn't even what? No. You didn't even notice. See, the challenge is that most of us are failing, but we don't know it. If we know it, we'll change. But failure doesn't happen in a day, or a week, or a month, or a year. It's a gradual shift over time. And when we're not aware of it, we can't change it. So how do we become aware of it? How do we become aware of that shift?
Sorry, I don't have a bike. I didn't get enough sleep. That's some of yours. It's not my jeans. I don't want to look all tired out. I need a better coach. I don't like getting tackled. I have a stomach ache. I'm not the athletic type. I want to get sweaty. I have better things to do. I don't want to slow you down. I have to do this? As soon as I get a promotion, I think I'll sit this one out. And my feet hurt. See, what happens is those excuses that we allow ourselves to believe, they become they become an infection. And when they become an infection, it eventually causes a disease. And we let that disease faster around so long to the point where then it's too late and we miss out on our opportunity. We gotta take action now. Ladies and gentlemen, if we take action now, a magical summer will be in front of us. How do you know that you experience this breakthrough? Well, here's how you know. I would write this down, I would take note of this. Is do the best you can. That's how you know your breakthrough is gonna take place. Because a breakthrough is not measured by a result. A breakthrough is measured with how well are you doing? How close to your best are you doing? Whether it's $50,000, $100,000, $500,000, a million dollar summer, Great. Was it your best? Was that your best? Did you show up every day and give your best? If you did, life will take its course. Focus on the one step. All the other steps will reveal themselves. But just focus on what you can control. See, growth, in the process of growing, you're learning. And when you learn these lessons, what happens is you're able to apply these lessons and you're able to make a difference in other people's. The essence to life is growth. And then when you grow, you can make changes in other people and make a difference. That's what we thrive for. So how do we grow? We're gonna do a little exercise before I wind up. How do we grow? Perspective is how we grow. We need something to be affirmed. We need something, Tony Robbins calls it an incantation. And there's two types of incantations, right? There's the incantation and the incantation. The incantation is what a lot of us do. I'm, the, the way you just saw this gentleman in the video, I'm too weak, I'm too slow, what are people going to think? That's an incantation, we're affirming that to be real. Our language is so powerful. So we got to monitor and manage that self-talk. How do we monitor and manage that self-talk? How do we make it real? How do we affirm it to be true? By writing your own daily affirmation. And this is something we talked about last year. And this is something I've grown into doing continuously. Someone said to me last night, I vaguely said, man, you have so much energy. I have so much energy. Wow, dancing, that was fun. Had a good time. You have so much energy. And this is one of those things that drive my energy. So let's take a moment real quick. Let's go and write an affirmation for yourself. Something that you want to affirm to be true. I would encourage you to use words like this. I will continue doing blank. I get to blank. I am blank. I will embody blank. I will continue. I have. I possess. I am capable. I get to. Anybody like to share what they got for the rough draft? Maybe one or two of you, brave souls. Los? I will okay. believe in my people. I will believe in my people. Simple. Freaking love it. What about you, Ron? Um, I have a lot. <laughs> so list them rapid fire, go for it. Okay, I have had <clears throat> I will continue to not give up. I will continue to grow and learn. I'm a badass. I'm capable of anything I put my mind to. I will lead, not follow. And I will continue to overcome my past and allow it to affect my future. And I am strong. Boom. Last one, Dallas. Big one, that's exactly. I'm capable of having a breakthrough year. Capable of having a breakthrough year. Love it. Go for it. I will lay the foundation for my future. <laughs> mm. Love it. I will continue to leave my legacy. 
Steven, go for it. I will fully embody the thought until it's a blue show. Beautiful. Nice. <clears throat> It's okay if I share with you guys? Yeah. yeah. Maybe it'll help you. I will reach a place of fulfillment. Regardless of circumstances or results, I will continue to contribute to others and be a servant leader towards their success. I will embody this mindset with aspirations to completely transform my approach towards life. I will continue to dance weekly in order to keep my passion for fun and companionship. I will continue to shoot billiards twice a month in order to gauge where my clarity of thoughts are. I will continue playing guitar weekly in order to create a clarity of thought. I will continue focusing on my health and fitness because it will, cre it will create a sustainable energy. I will continue to keep in contact with my family in order to foster relationships that bring meaning to me. I have tons of potential. I am capable of influencing others to reach their potential. I have an insurmountable energy that I can tap into in order to sustain my performance. My success will be in proportion to how effectively I guide others. Therefore, I will merely focus on serving my people. Growth. The best you can be is the essence to your life. That's where breakthroughs come from. See. People are very unique. Trees, on the other hand, how do they grow? Half? Do they just grow half? But then they reach a certain point and they're like, eh, I don't feel like growing anymore. <laughs> Trees plant their roots as deep as they can go. They grow their limbs as high as they can go. They grow as many leaves and fruits as they can grow. People are unique. People are unique because we have one curse and we also have a blessing. And do you know what that curse and blessing is? Choice. Choice. The dignity of choice. The dignity and the power of choice. See, the moment we realize that we actually can control, we can't control our physical growth, but we can control our mental growth. We can control the best, and we can be the best of those two easies. The more you give, the more you do, the more you grow, the more those achievements are going to fuel your desires. And what happens is, is you'll see this progress. And how do we feel about progress? Oh, progress, that's the fuel, baby. That's the fuel. That's how we know we're moving in the right direction. See, how do you measure progress, though? See, if we measure progress in our mind, we have an imagination that tricks us all the time. If we measure a progress in the mind, we're good salespeople. <laughs> we think we're better than, the, than we really are. So the best way to measure your progress is how? Is by keeping record of it, by writing it down, and looking back and saying, okay, did I win today? You put it in a schedule. Did I win the day? Did I get these things done? How much am I accomplishing? See, are you getting through the day? Or are we getting from the day? Are we getting from the day? Emotional clarity. Are we getting from the day? Different relationships, different, different opportunities, different ideas, different lessons. Are we getting from the day? Writing it out allows us to see it objectively. We take the emotions out of it. We use the frontal lobe, if I'm not mistaken, versus the Olympic system. If I read emotional intelligence correctly, I could, be, I could stand correctly, corrected. But what happens is we start being responsible. We start being self-reliant. We start being resilient. We start making progress and we see the gains of it, so we continue doing it. Some of us rest to renew during the summertime. You're gonna to talk to branches, and you're gonna to talk to other managers, and they say, man, I rested last night, I feel great. You got five hours, six hours, four and a half hours. All I need was a little rest just to recharge, just to renew, and get ready to conquer the day. Some people, when they're not making progress, or not recording their progress, they rest to avoid the day. 
So what they do is they rest and the alarm goes off and they say, what's a few more minutes? It's not gonna matter. It does matter. It does matter. Those few minutes matter. Why do those few minutes matter? Because Matt doesn't know, you know. And wherever you go, that's what matters. Because your conscience is still there. How you do one thing is how you do everything. everything. When you're doing your best, don't you beat the alarm? When you're at your best and you see the progress, don't you jump out of bed? When you're at your best, don't you look at your planner the night before and say, hell yeah, tomorrow's gonna be great. I can't wait for the possibilities of tomorrow. <laughs> Isn't that what your best looks like? Aren't you psyched for the day? That success fuels your ambition, which fuels your breakthrough. And that's why it's important for self-encouragement. Matt talked about not beating yourself up or beating up somebody else. If they're not getting the results or the return that they want, celebrate those successes. We're so quick. We're so quick to, to beat us when we're down and so tough on ourselves. If you're training a puppy on how to go to the bathroom outside, how do you reinforce it? Do you rub its nose in it and say, don't do this in the house? They don't know what the heck you're talking about. That's not the effective way to do it. You celebrate the wins. You encourage the wins. When they go scratch at the door, you give them a treat and say, awesome job, puppy. That's how you're supposed to do it. They didn't know. They, you rub their nose in it. They think you're rubbing their nose in it for actually just going to the bathroom. And sometimes they stop going to the bathroom altogether. Positive reinforcements, self-encouragement. How do you talk to yourself? Pat yourself on the back. If you make a mistake, say, hey, great job. Now I know a lesson. I just learned an awesome lesson. Thomas Edison, those of you guys that have heard this before, a reporter went to Thomas Edison when he was inventing electricity. And they said, I'm going to document this because he already had tons of failures. So the reporters documented and said, Mr. Edison, no offense, but you're not going to make it work. It's impossible. He's already failed hundreds and hundreds of times at this point. And while the reporter is there, it's documented, an explosion took place in his house and nearly killed both of them. <laughs> and the reporter said, see, you're out of your mind. And Mr. Edison went to his journal and started documenting it and recording what just happened. And he said, no, I just figured something out. I figured out what not to do next time <laughs> and how to make a bomb. <laughs> How are you viewing mistakes? How are you viewing your mistakes? Self-encouragement, self-talk. Things are going to happen this summer. Things are going to happen in your life. Circumstances will take place. How are we going to view them? Don't beat yourself up for messing up. Pat yourself on the back and say, heck yeah, I can't wait to take this lesson and apply it moving forward. I'm so excited I figured it out. Under the banner of self-encouragement, I would encourage you not to rely on other people for self-encouragement. Mm. My love language is words of affirmation, but when you rely on other people for those words and they're not there, what happens? How successful do you feel? How much progress do you feel? You gotta make sure you're controlling your own encouragement, and that's the only thing that really matters when moving forward to having this breakthrough. Once that mental, mental battle is won, you're ready. My topic of this message has been about the mental breakthrough. Because winning and going through this business is psychology. You could forget all the mechanics, all the tools of this business. And if you just win the mental and the emotional battle daily, if you read your affirmation daily, if you control those choices daily, if you are disciplined daily, that's how you win the summer. That's how you win your life. These next few weeks in front of us is what matters the most, especially in our business. We know you've heard the first seven weeks. <coughs> Take action immediately. 
and allow that action to continue through the rest of the summer. Get that momentum now. Because once you get on that trajectory, once you break through that wall that's been protecting you, and you get on the opposite end of that wall, and you break through that wall that has been separating you, is also protecting you from seeing your true potential, from seeing your dreams, and seeing that success. We break through that wall, we create lasting change. And that's where the transformation takes place. You experience that transformation, ladies and gentlemen, I'm telling you right now, it becomes inspiring to yourself and to other people. It brings you a sense of energy that allows you to contribute more so than you ever have before. So I was watching uh, a movie, uh, Mandela, and he, he said a quote in the movie, inspiration towards a vision creates actions towards the possibilities of a greater tomorrow. And he talks about in the movie, if you've seen it or if you haven't, he said, the finger of one can't do much, it's weak. But when you get those fingers, and you get more fingers and you put them together, it makes a fist, which makes it extremely strong. As a team, as a North Florida blue chip team, we could do something strong. You are not doing this as one, we are doing this together. It's very exciting to see all of you, from, from Travis, to see where you've come throughout the entire process, hearing stories from you when you were a, a baby rep and getting a chance to go to a football game with you, to see now you open up your own office, to see Veronica going through different roller coaster ride with your office and circumstances, to coming now to be in a leadership role. Uh, where you've made it through something I don't even know how the heck you made it through. So Ryan, you've been like a little brother to me since uh, you started. You're coming up on your three year anniversary and to see you grow into an amazing leader working side by side with Patrick this summer is gonna be exciting. Kelsey, I am so fired up for what we're about to build together in Clearwater this summer. It is about to be one of the most memorable, game-changing summers in Clearwater history under your leadership. I am so excited uh, for what's about to come. To Bunny, I mean, you've been one of the most impressive candidates since, uh, since the start uh, of your career. Matt even said it. He saw this person in you that you may not even have seen. I remember when you gave a speech to these branches a couple months ago. It was like, Dag, she is on point. She is ready to go freaking dominate this summer. Luke, to see what you did last summer and, and to, to develop these young professionals to be number one, to, uh, to do some amazing things, or number two, I don't remember the one, but uh, besides the point. Uh, so I, I just think it's been exciting to see you take this knowledge that you have and really uh, provide that service to all your people last summer. It's been exciting. I'm fired up to see what's going to happen this summer, man. To see you grow into this role is exciting. James, I mean, we partnered up on Tony. Uh, you've been on fire, man, I, selling a lot of knives, buying the laptop, dude. You're making moves. This is about to be the transformation summer for you. I mean, we all know you here, but on a national scale, this is where you make your move, man. I'm really excited about that. I feel like you had some good breakthroughs uh, at Tony as well. Uh, Leah, it's awesome to see how freaking young you are and to see where you're coming through the process, uh, through learning the skills to be able to be the best veterinarian that you could possibly be. Uh, it's going to be really exciting to see how you grow as a leader this summer to open up the best vet hospital there's ever been. You know, by own to see where you were so uncertain back in the day when you're like, I don't know if I could do this, to growing to be a freaking standout candidate. It's been really cool to see your posts on WhatsApp and on Facebook. It's really cool to see where you're going to be going. I, I, I mean, I don't know you very well, but I know what I'm seeing. And uh, from the outside looking in, it's very, very impressive. You know, Becky, I mean, it's been cool just watching you role play throughout mm -hmm. this from last year until this year. Uh, it's, it's so exciting because it's literally like I'm working with Katie. Uh, you're like the, uh, the replica uh, of Katie, and I'm really excited to see what's going to happen and once you really get a chance to apply it under your leadership. Uh, Taylor, it's been so cool to see you emerge as a, just a BA sales rep. I mean, you just kicked some tail selling Cutco. I've known you since you were a sales rep, and now to see you take the lead to the take the leap to the varsity team uh, to take those sales tools and apply them as a manager, man, it's going to be exciting when you take some people under your wing and you teach them those things that you know what to do. Uh, I'm excited for you. Uh, Jalissa, all I hear about you is great things from Randy, uh, from Matt, 
uh, to, to meeting your mom, to Carlos. I mean, it, it, every single person loves you. Uh, you got a heart of a freaking champion. And, uh, you know, it's pretty cool just hearing behind the scenes everyone fighting for you this summer. It was really cool to hear that uh, you are wanted by yeah, many. So, uh, really cool. Uh, you're always dressed to the T and uh, just completely <laughs> impressive every single time. And, and uh, that swag is freaking awesome. I'm envious of that, yeah, that swag. And uh, it's cool to see that, that mirror that you guys are going to have between you and Carlos. You're going to recruit some really studly people this summer in Dallas. It's going to be really cool. Uh, you know, Steven, we got a chance to uh, you know, see where you've come from under Katie to working with Dallas uh, to grow as uh, just instead of being an enthusiastic person uh, to uh, an amazing leader that's going to help Dallas build a dynasty in Daytona and really lead and lock arms together to do something that's never been done in that market before, uh, which I can't wait to watch. Uh, to Nicole, I don't know, same thing. I don't know how the heck you got out of the tally situation alive uh, and uh, not even alive but ready to thrive. And that's what's even more impressive. I'm always seeing like newsfeed on Facebook and seeing like different things that uh, you're working on, taking notes, asking good questions. It seems as if you're making the moves to be mentally prepared for the challenge of summer. And uh, you're gonna get a chance to apply a lot of those lessons and see what happens from it. So I'm excited to watch it happen. It's gonna be really cool. Uh, you know, Vega, man, to see you, you go as a branch manager last summer as one of the standout candidates at FC uh, to just a, a poised, confident, focused individual, very impressive, the University of Florida, uh, standout student, it, man, I, wow, you, you've just been impressive this entire time. You apply that to this summer, it's going to be pretty exciting. Uh, Joe, every single time I had the privilege of watching you, uh, you role play, uh, man, it's been extremely impressive. I told Trey every time, it's like this guy, he's got it. He has absolutely got it. He is ready to kick some tail. We just need to put him in front of some people uh, that he can teach how to ship some blades. Uh, Lee Moore, I am so impressed by your commitment uh, to, uh, to driving back and forth yesterday, the other day, to being loyal to your, uh, to your culture and to your, to, to your beliefs. And while at the same time, being able to be a standout candidate and, and, and just, wow, I am so impressed uh, with how focused that you, that you are when it comes to things that are important to you. And if you just apply that to this summer, man, <laughs> your people are going to really be in for a freaking treat. Uh, A-Rod, it's been cool coaching you and getting a chance to see you experience some breakthroughs. Uh, you know, on the sales side of things, the Trey has nothing but amazing things to say uh, of you as in the office. And now getting a chance to have this, the sales uh, confidence along with the office confidence, to apply those two together, that's going to be an exciting, exciting experience for you this summer. You know, Orlando, it's cool. I get a chance to hang out with you a little bit to lock down your office. But I remember when you were 17 years old, uh, this new guy uh, that is 17, just making some moves and like, uh, or still in high school, maybe you weren't 17, but you're just still in high school. This young guy now emerging to be a leader and as a manager and now a branch manager. Uh, man, you've been impressive the entire time. But wow, to see what you're going to be able to do as a young professional uh, neighboring me, I can't wait to inherit your development uh, during, the, during the fall. Uh, I'm, I'm very excited for that. Uh, so that's going to be cool. Uh, that's going to be really cool. You're going to develop some cool people. Uh, Matos, to see where you've come through the process. I remember a couple springs ago uh, where you were here out of the business. Uh, that you uh, had this uh, this wall that was guarding you from getting sales or recommendations or whatever that nonsense was, and to see you bow your head down and just break through, that one breakthrough is still is still going uh, from that moment uh, of clarity that you experienced from being an assistant to, to being a kick butt sales rep to winning trips, and now the confidence that you're going to have going to Ocala is going to be really freaking cool. Uh, I'm excited to see what you're about to do up there too. So definitely good, exciting stuff. Brogues, you just need to apply the same discipline you have toward running. I mean, to, to you just absolutely kick tail uh, when it comes to the, the physical endurance. Uh, when, when, I don't remember what we did, a 5K or whatever it was, uh, but just so you apply that same intensity towards your business, wow. I mean, it's going to be so, so exciting to see uh, what you're able to create. I saw what you did with Herrick and Trey and with Deer and the Pilot. It's going to be exciting for you. 
Uh, Evidente, man, I mean, you've been just a freaking stud. It's been exciting to watch you grow in the business from this immature, uh, like, young guy that would just look sharp to an actual young guy who looks sharp but has a sense of confidence and professionalism to him. And it's really cool to see you run the branches and, and, and make it through as a leader and now getting a chance to lock arms with the ADVM. It's going to be really exciting. And, uh, you know, Trey, I mean, as far as you go, man, and build, building this uh, this division with unbelievable development. I mean, uh, I would say, what, 40% of this room is yours? I mean, it's uh, it's pretty freaking awesome and impressive to see you make that decision last summer, say, you know what, enough is enough, it's time for a change, and then boom, uh, you change. <laughs> you know, you change your people, they all followed, and it's been impressive to see, and obviously you know you, what your your vision is, and you know you're gonna create some amazing things in your, in your district team. Uh, Gene, we all know what you bring to the table. You've been on point this entire meeting. I mean, we steal all of your stuff, so uh, that's <laughs> how we have point. Uh, so it's, it's really exciting. I think the other 40% of this team is yours. Uh, you know, uh, maybe not that high between the two of you because Matt has some people here too. But, uh, but uh, I think it's been I think it's been pretty exciting just to see you grow uh, through the process with me and, and being able to challenge me to grow more because of how much you've been growing. And it's been awesome just to lock arms with you as a business partner and as a friend uh, of this over the last several months. It's been awesome. So continue doing what you're doing, especially in Gainesville because we're right right on your heels. Uh, so we're really excited to see what we can do. Coming at you. Yeah, Kelsey bringing all of your stuff. Coming at you. Uh, so, uh, Carlos, man, you, and the reason why is because you went out to, you were from Jake Bailey, man. You were from back in, way back in the day. I don't know how you made it out running a branch. You opened up your first branch in like July. You know, it's like, I don't even know how you made it through that summer. And then the following summer, you opened up that branch in like June. And it's like, I don't even know how you made it through. But you for, you just have the persistence of a freaking champion. And, uh, you know, it's, I'm excited. To see <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, not I'm just so fired up just to see how much you've grown and see what you're going to do when you actually have the office set up and ready to go uh, with that momentum. It's going to be really cool to see. Uh, Dallas, I mean, it, it's been time for a change in Daytona for a little bit uh, to see what you did in Citrus County and applying those same things uh, to Daytona with a new star, with a new office this summer, uh, locking arms with your boy. I think it's going to be that feel and that culture, and that, that's what we need in Daytona, and I know you're ready to bring it. It's going to be exciting for you, man. Uh, keep, uh, just keep hungry and just stay focused. It's going to be cool. Uh, Fareed, you're like the blue chip, man. You're like the new hotshot, uh, the intelligent kid from UM that uh, just has a head on his shoulder from the private high school. Uh, you're going to attract so many people like you that is going to be so scary to see what your development is going to like. Uh, just a bunch of freaking PA sales reps that are ready to tackle the universe. So I'm, I'm excited to see what you're about to go do, man. Uh, Lois, I've watched you, man, uh, as a 17-year-old, just grow through the freaking process. Uh, I mean, I remember convincing you to stay for a freaking bone jam, uh, you know, because uh, you didn't feel like it, to party with you in Cancun, to watch you grow into a branch, an assistant, and a PSM for the last three years. And I mean, you've been ready to go run your show for so long. Obviously, I give you a hard time to remind you that you haven't done it yet. Uh, but it's uh, it's uh, the confidence and the swag is obviously there. So I mean, I, we've needed a, an amazing leader uh, for the long haul in Tallahassee for a while, and uh, I'm excited to see what you're about to do up there and build for the next several years. So it's going to be really exciting to watch, uh, Garrett. I mean, you obviously when you turn it on, we we've seen you sell so much Cutco when you're ready and focused and engaged. And I know that's what you're going to apply to your business this summer, and that's what your people are going to really crave from you. It's just that all-out intensity, and I can't wait to watch it, man. We we haven't had a kick butt manager in Pensacola in West Florida since I've been here, and uh, we've been trying to fill that territory with the right person. And I'm excited to watch you make that happen. So that's going to be great, uh, Slocum. I know you've been Trey's boy since uh, before we even knew you. Uh, you know, up in the Carolinas, and he brought you down to commitment that you showed to him and helped him build his dynasty here in Florida. A lot of this is your fault. And uh, to see now you lock arms with my boy Doug over here, uh, I can't wait to see what you guys are going to do with the freaking pilot. It's going to be scary. Uh, so I, I just, with your knowledge and experience with the business and applying that to the Tampa Pilot Powerhouse, wow, it's going to be exciting to watch. And Doug, man, you've been, uh, you've been the game changer. The, if I had to pick one person out of my entire organization that's been the game changer, uh, it's been you the entire time. 
the fighter starter, the person who's just uh, just had my back the entire time, the good cop, bad cop, to back in the day, to you know <laughs> being able to grow as a, a leader. It's been so exciting to watch you just uh, develop into uh, just an amazing, amazing pilot sales manager into an amazing district next year. Uh, Herrick, I remember when you came to my freaking team meeting to give a speech because you were one of the bottom assistant managers uh, in the pilot because <laughs> Matt didn't want to give me anybody else. And uh, <laughs> I remember this. <laughs> I, I remember this. And uh, he, and, 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 <laughs> and, 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 and Jahan, uh, Jahan was like, no, you don't understand. Like, he's really good. I was like, I don't know, really know who he is, but we need a, we need a guest speaker. And Matt's like, I, I think if anyone's going to rival a Brahm, a your Abramowitz is uh, work ethic, it's this guy. You know, he's the real deal. It's about to be exciting. And uh, just to see from like that first fall uh, when you just moved here until now, holy crap. I mean, you're a new, you're like a first full year DM, but you're like a vet DM. You're viewed as a vet DM. I forget that you're a new DM sometimes. I mean, you've been around for so long. And uh, I mean, it's just been so impressive the entire time to watch and see you grow into the amazing leader that you've developed to be. Uh, Matt's seen it in you uh, the entire time. Uh, so obviously it's exciting to see uh, you actually fill the shoes. And of course, Matt, I mean, you've been like the big bro the entire time. I mean, I've been through hell and back through my 20s uh, while I've been through this business between relationships and debts and finances with the houses and the real estate to, you know, cars breaking down to, I mean, uh, just everything I've been through uh, through this entire time. And you've just been there, you've been my rock in the whole process growing into the man I've become. And uh, I'm excited to lock arms with you as your most veteran district with this team of badasses and of amazing future leaders and young professionals to see what you've been able to do and groom uh, as, uh, as a division manager. I mean, you obviously know how proud you are, but I gotta remind you uh, of how proud of you I am to see you take these strides uh, between just, just the health and the fitness and, and the growth and the Tony Robbins and bringing all these new concepts and not getting really complacent. Uh, it's what's kept me around for so long is the personal growth, man. So keep doing what you're doing and I'll keep doing what I'm doing. So ultimately, I think we have the team. We're not just one. We have the fist. We're strong as hell. We're about to dominate the freaking vector world and bring back one of these silver cups this summer. So let's break through in 2014, guys. Woo!